You know, there is, an, there is a situation that had just happened in Nigeria recently, or last week, I think, uh, that led to Pastor uh, Adeboye resigning, resigning from... Pastor Adeboye is uh, a, the leading clergyman in Nigeria. And I think what they did, maybe the number one pastor, I mean, your denomination or church in the world. So he, he had to resign his position as the GO of Nigerian church and because of some political things going on. So when, you know what he said later on at the end of the day, when that thing, decision touched him and what led to his, his res, re, uh, resignation, at the end of the day he said, I am now appealing to all my members, or maybe he said in other words, but basically he was appealing to all his members to go and join political parties. He was now telling his members, go and join political parties everywhere and go into politics, that until we Christians go and join political parties and go into politics and mass, nothing will change. Pastor Deboye before used to say, no, I'm just called to do the church. I'm only called to build uh, uh, redeemed church, and this is my calling. This is my I face my business. I face my calling. So you see that Pastor Deboye and other people they try not to comment on political things in Nigeria. They try to be silent. You know, the church people in Nigeria generally they just try to be silent concerning political matters. They don't touch it. They just try to be gentlemen. To try to be good. Until, I say until the politics itself started dealing with them one by one, then they started waking up and say, oh, yeah, 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 it's time now to begin to join politics. Now, so, thank God that thing happened to Pastor Adeboye because if it didn't happen, the, his people would have known that they have his blessings to go on mass and do all kind of political activities. So, the, for the first time, he openly called people, maybe he had been blessing people individually or privately, but openly called all the members to go join politics. Because, but before, the stance was, anything that is happening nationally, oh, let's all just pray, let's just pray, let's just pray. Now, only God can save Nigeria, let's just pray, let's just pray. But until Christians begin to realize that the, only the gospel of the kingdom will redeem the earth, and Nigeria in particular, that nothing will happen. So just to be saying gospel of salvation, we, are, we only care about salvation of souls. We just want people to go to heaven, or our own deal just to do the spiritual stuff, you know. One day, the politics will deal with us. And when the politics begin to deal with you, I, because I live in Russia. I live in Russia. I, I've lived in Russia for the past 30 years of my life. I know what it means when politics begin to deal with you. I have been a victim of it for a long time. And I've gone through the system, I mean, the process of being, of, being, uh, of being attacked by politics, of how evil politics could be if you are not you know, if you are not in charge. So, so thank God that thing happened to Pastor Adeboye, you know, whatever the thing is. Some people are thinking that it was a bad thing. No, I think it's a good thing. Everything works together for good for those people who love God and who are called by to his, to his, for his purpose. So I think that was a good thing that happened with the situation with Pastor Adeboye because, you know, now the, all the Christians in Nigeria will know now we got the blessing of the 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 most class, senior clergy. Now we are supposed to be more actively involved in politics. Otherwise, Muslims and others are the people taking taking charge of politics in Nigeria. But can you imagine if all the Christians, all actively born again Christians, begin to get involved in Nigerian politics, and if they are going to be trained and coached and prepared for that, especially, uh, you know, things are just going to change in our country. So, uh, so you know. It's the same thing with this charlatan thing. We should not keep quiet, just like our leaders have been quiet about politics. Just like the pastors and clergy have been quiet about politics, so that's the way they are still quiet now about other pastors who are just charlatans. And I think they shouldn't be quiet. I think everybody needs to begin to raise their voice, both against the, against the bad behavior of, Chris, of their co colleagues, of fellow pastors, and, and the bad boys who are doing MMM and things like that. Everybody is supposed to raise up their voice. Every consensual 
Christian, every Christian leader, leadership is about giving leadership. So for you to be a leader, to say you are a pastor or a leader, you shouldn't just be a pastor in your own local church. To be a leader, you shouldn't just be a leader of your own local church. You are a leader of the society. You are an example, a model for your country. So you are supposed to talk into the life of the general country. No, you know, some people will even tell me, they used to tell me, Pastor, face your business. I'm going to write a book about that. Pastor, face your business. I'm going to, oh, you mean it? For sure? <laughs> so it's not my business when I talk about politics. It's not my business when I talk about the economy. You, you mean it? Okay. Then you tell me. <laughs> what, what Wasn't it God's business that uh, you know, Samuel was doing when he was talking about politics, when he was installing kings in Israel? Was it not, not God's business? Huh? When John the Baptist, even though he got his head cut off, but he did the will of God. When he went to challenge the uh, hero of his days, was it not in fact God's business he was doing? Was it not God's business he was doing when, uh, 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 you know, the first apostles, they, they had disciples in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the court of Caesar. In the court of Caesar, Caesar they had disciples. Why, were they not doing the work of God? So... So, uh, does that mean that they were not in, God, in God's business? Does it mean that it was not God's business when Joseph got involved in the politics of Egypt? It was not God's business? You think it was not God's business when, when, uh, when Daniel got involved with the Babylonian politics? It, it was not God's business? You know, look at all the men of God in the Bible. It was not God's business when Paul said that even though I must be tied in, Jer in uh, Jerusalem, but I must, I mean, was, is it in Rome? I must go there anyway to, to, to testify, both to the, from the court of Caesar to the, to the very list of the people there. Even I'm going to lose my mind, I'm still going to, I mean, I'm going to lose my life, I'm still going to do it. Wasn't that God's business? So it's, it's unfortunate that we think that it's, God's business is only to read the Bible. It's unfortunate when we begin to limit God to just the four walls of the church. It's unfortunate when we begin to limit God just to, to the pulpit. It's unfortunate when we just limit God to our little doctrine, our little denominations. No, my friends, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So we have the right to speak to all the earth and the fullness of the earth. earth because the earth and the fullness thereof belong to the Lord. And since the earth and the fullness of the Lord belong to the Lord, we can speak to those things. We could speak to everything that is happening in any part of the earth, in every sphere of the earth, be it that politics, be it that economy, be it that uh, culture, be it that entertainment, be it that engi uh, engineering, uh, te technology, be it that medicine, be it that every sphere of life could be used to glorify God. So don't be deceived by, by, by thinking that you are only meant to read the Bible alone and to only, only speak about spiritual things. No, no, no. That is the greatest deception of Satan against the church. And that is one of the reasons why Satan will always defeat the church and will always win the whole earth to itself. It will conquer the whole world um, without us even lifting a, a finger because we have been deceived. To believe that you know the earth is is satanic or is de de demonic and is devilish and that uh, you know only God uh, only you know only Bible and spiritual matters only prayer we could do but thank God that thing happened to Pastor uh, Adeboye thank God the, the 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 man of God <laughs> he had the voice of God sometimes that is the best way God for God to speak to us either by good or by force. You know, sometimes he uses situations like that to speak to you and to teach us. And, you know, that statement that Pastor uh, Adeboye made that people should go into politics is one of the greatest things that will happen to Nigeria and to Nigerian Christianity as a whole. So, you know, I hope the people will take it serious. And from what I think, I think people are not taking that statement too serious. People are more talking about the fact that they are talking about the guy uh, or Bazi, they think he's a bad guy, and you know, I think that's not the matter. I think God used him, no matter whatever decision he took, and we think it's not right, but I think God used that guy, and uh, that's number one. Number two, 
people are talking about, you know, Pastor Adebo is stepping down, or not stepping down, is he going to be there, or is he going to be uh, in charge, or not going to be in charge. But I think God has already fulfilled his purpose through that crisis. God has fulfilled his purpose, and he has used the man to use his authority to release the body of Christ into the freedom of being able to go into politics and being able to do everything uh, to be able to bring Christians into the place of power so that they will be the way we will be the one deciding the future and the destiny of our country not some ungodly people that you know that uh, that we don't like that they are there but uh, but uh, we just we don't go there so if we are not going there then only the ungodly people are left they are the only ones who are going to be taking charge of it instead of us because we are not going there